In this video, let us see the catechol amides and their chemical nature. First of all, let us see what are the catechol amides. Catechol amines are the compounds having this common structure like this. So they are having the two things, catechol and amide. So this is the catechol group and this is the amine group. So that's why they are called as catechol amides. Now, what are the natural catechol amides that are present endogenously in the living systems? So, first one is the catechol amine with alpha and beta portion having no substitution, that is the dopamine. You can see that dopamine is a simple catechol amine. Another catechol amine is the having OH group at the beta portion, so beta hydroxy catechol amine which is the noradrenaline. You can see that the beta hydroxyl group is placed on the dopamine leading to noradrenaline. So you can compare the noradrenaline with the next type of catechol amine that is having N-methyl substitution on the nitrogen. Now adrenaline is another catechol amine which is having the methyl group on the nitrogen. You can easily see that the adrenaline and noradrenaline. The prefix nor indicates there is no methyl group on the nitrogen. So adrenaline is having the methyl group whereas noradrenaline is not having the methyl group on the nitrogen. So nor indicates no methyl group on the nitrogen. Now let us see the synthetic catechol amines. So the first one is uh, already we have seen the so adrenaline is an endogenous mediator. We can compare this structure with a synthetic compound which is having an isopropyl group on the nitrogen. So adrenaline is having the methyl group which is replaced by isopropyl group in this compound. So this is called as isoprenaline. So isoprenaline is a first synthetic catechol amine. Now let us see the non catechol amines. Non catechol amines can act in three ways. First one directly acting indirectly acting and mixed acting. So let us start with the first one directly acting that is the phenylephrine. Phenylephrine is one of a directly acting agent. You can see that there is no OH group at the fourth position. The absence of OH group at the fourth position results in the alpha 1 selectivity of the phenylephrine. So phenylephrine is a alpha 1 agonist. Similarly other directly acting drugs are terbutaline and salbutamol. You can see that in the tetbutalin, the OH group is not present at the fourth position, instead it is present at the fifth position. So 3,4 hydroxy groups are converted into 3,5 hydroxy groups in the tetbutalin. Similarly, in the salbutamol, you can observe the third position OH group is replaced with the hydroxy methyl group. So 3 hydroxy group is shifted with the 3-hydroxymethyl group in the salbutamol. These two drugs are the beta-2 agonists. So you can see that the two structural modifications here, the replacement of 3-4-OH with the 3-5-OH and replacement of 3-OH with the 3-hydroxymethyl group leads to the beta-2 selectivity for these two type of drugs. Now let us see the indirectly acting agents. First one is the amphetamine. So amphetamine is having no beta hydroxyl group, but at the same time, it is having a methyl group at the alpha position. This methyl group is not present on the nitrogen, but it is present as a side chain at the alpha carbon. The presence of this methyl group introduces a new chiral carbon on the side chain. And another feature of the amphetamine, it does not have any OH group at the third and fourth position. So complete lack of OH groups at the third and fourth position can be observed in the amphetamine. Next one is the mixed acting. Ephedrine is having the OH group at the beta position and CH3 group at the alpha position with 1R and 2S configuration. And similarly, Pseudoephedrine is an isomer of the ephedrine which is having a opposite configuration that is 1S and 2R. And again you can see that these drugs are having no OH groups at the third and fourth position just like the amphetamine. But these groups retain the beta hydroxyl group which results in the mixed acting sympathomimetic. So these drugs can act directly as well as indirectly on the adrenergic receptors. 
So these are the various catecholamines and the non-catecholamines which are structurally related.